Good evening, boys and ghouls, and welcome to another scary, spine-tingling episode of Hybrid Games' Gametober. We're continuing on the Legacy of Kane series quick plays with Legacy of Kane series Soul Reaver 1 for the PlayStation 1. And we're playing on a PS3 as a Sony PlayStation Network download. It'll be a lot of fun, and it'll probably rattle your bones. Hold on to your dual shocks, boys and ghouls, because me and Sally the Skeleton here are going to jump in real quick to Soul Reaver Legacy of Kane for the PlayStation. Today on Hybrid Games' is Gametober. Before we start, I do want to point out that, yes, there are three more games after this one, and one of them, if you haven't seen my recent convention video where I went to Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2022 in Portland, Oregon, I did pick up Soul Reaver 2 for the PlayStation 2. So a little bit of an update there. We have Soul Reaver 2 coming up soon. After this video, of course. We've also got Blood Omen 2. And we've got the final game in the series, Legacy of Kane Defiance. Please stay tuned for those, and I hope you look forward to seeing those ones on my channel as well. They will be coming out this October, Gametober, right here on Happy Beard Games. Now, Blood Omen Legacy of Kane was by Silicon Knight. Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver is by Crystal Dynamics. I'm not sure about the reasons for the developer change or how many um, people involved in these two games were um, from different developers. I'm not sure. Maybe it's the same developer, maybe they changed names. I don't know. Here is the menu. I love this menu. You've got these vampire statues, and they move. And the way that they move is like it's, it's a 2D image, but it just looks really creepy the way they did it, too. They really achieved... Um, a really nice uh, style with that too. Turn on the options, let's start game. Now pay attention to the background music on this cutscene, and I'll be quiet because there's a lot of talking during it too. It's important. Kane is deified. The clans tell tales of him. Few know the truth. He was mortal once, as were we all. However, his contempt for humanity drove him to create me and my brethren. I am Razio, firstborn of his lieutenants. I stood with Cain and my brethren at the dawn of the Empire. I have served him a millennium. Over time, we became less human and more... divine. Cain would enter the state of change and emerge with a new gift. Some years after the Master, our evolution would follow. Until I had the honor of surpassing my lord. For my transgression, I earned a new kind of reward. Agony. I feel like out of all the PlayStation cutscenes I've ever seen in my life, this is the one I've seen the most. There was only one possible outcome. My eternal damnation. I, Razio, was to suffer the fate of traitors and weaklings, to burn forever in the bowels of the Lake of the Dead. Cast him in. Burning with white hot fire, I plunged into the depths of the abyss. Unspeakable pain, relentless agony. Time ceased to exist. Only this torture and a deepening hatred of the hypocrisy that damned me to this hell. An eternity passed, and my torment receded bringing me back from the precipice of madness. The descent had destroyed me, and 
yet I lived. Alright, that was the awesome opening cinematic to Soul Reaver. This game is amazing, and also this is a game that's known for not having any uh, real load screens, which is interesting too. I know you, Razier. There's you more I want to talk worthy. about, but we'll go through this intro first. What madness is this? What pitiful form is this that I have come to inhabit? Death would be a release next to this travesty. You did not survive the Abyss, Razier. I have only spared you from total dissolution. I would choose oblivion over this existence. The choice is not yours. I am destroyed. You are reborn. The birth of one of Cain's abominations traps the essence of life. It is this soul that animates the corpse you lived in. And that, Raziel, is the demise of Nazgoth. There is no balance. The souls of the dead remain trapped. I cannot spin them in the wheel of fate. They cannot complete their destinies. Redeem yourself. Or if you prefer, avenge yourself. Settle your dispute with Cain. Destroy him and your brethren. Free their souls and let the wheel of fate churn again. Use your hatred to reave their souls. I can make it possible. Become my soul reaver. My angel of death. All right, that's where we begin Raziel's story in Legacy of Cain's Soul Reaver. Now, there should be a way where I can put on the um, thumbstick, maybe? Can I switch to thumbstick? There we go. It makes it a little bit easier, the thumbstick. The first game, Legacy of Cain, was two-dimensional. This game, as I said last time, steps it up into the third dimension. Now you can see it's fully 3D. It's a little bit Tomb Raider-like, the way you move around, too. You can do a float, then you double tap the X button. And I think it should explain itself pretty quickly, but I just want to point out how awesome that intro scene is. Like, the very first Blood Omen was like a really good vampire simulator. Like, you're a vampire in the Middle Ages, and uh, you, you turn to a vampire at the start. So even this one has kind of a twist at the start, too. Um, and it's just, it's really cool to be Kane and all that. But then you get to this Kane's the villain. He took. Raziel, who had become more powerful as a, a, a vampire, you know, and grew some wings, he cast him down into the, um, the Sea of the Dead, or whatever it's called, and um, now he's reborn years These later. I don't know exactly how much the timeline is, but... Laying a path um, across so now we are Raziel as an even different type of undead. So he was a vampire, which is undead, but now he's like some kind of like other undead. So he's still a vampire, but... He's like spectral or something. They'll explain it in a bit. Engage by pressing square. There's something else that I wanted to look at in here, isn't there? Which is the way that I came from? If we go up. Suits up here. This game does have a very, um, more you Legend of Zelda me. Ocarina of Time you feel to it, which is kind of interesting if you think the about it that way. Has left me. Um, Ocarina of Time has no either just come out or is coming out around the time of Soul Reaver, and the very first Your Blood Omen was similar in ways to the NES and Super Nintendo Zelda a games. Of souls. To sustain your strength, you must hunt the lost spirits of the underworld and consume the souls of your enemies. Really cool. 
So, similarly to how Cain would feed off the blood of his victims and enemies, um, in the first game, with vampires drinking blood, uh, Raziel instead takes souls. You can see his uh, health bars at the bottom. There's not so much of the split HUD that takes up a lot of the screen in this game, like it did in the first Legacy of Cain, Blood Omen. Uh, but in this one, you have uh, a more minimized HUD for a more slightly cinematic experience, I would say. This game actually holds up pretty well. I mean, it does look like a PlayStation game. It does look like, you know, like your Tomb Raider or whatever, but um, it does... Um, holds up a little bit better than I expected. L1. You can crawl yeah, you can crawl around. And then you can also do a high jump when you're crawling, which is kind of interesting that the high jump and crawl would be the same uh, buttons. Your wings, though ruined, are not without purpose. Take hold of them as you leap, and they will carry you across this chasm. Okay, so you can glide with your wings. They are broken, they are damaged, but they can still allow you to do things like glide. Which is really cool, and is handy and necessary for the gameplay. These things used to creep me out when I first played these. these. These things are freaky. They're not really as scary as or intimidating as a vampire, but they're scary. Their feral hunger has claimed countless souls, spirits who now shall never find their rest. So you can rotate the camera with L2 and R2, uh, or you can set it like directly behind by just clicking it, kind of like a banjo Gazooie, which is really handy. Um, Let's try to fight these guys. We're gonna auto face to hold them down R. Uh, the attack button is square, and then look, you can once they're weak, you can suck them up into you and get some more health. So it's very similar to the gameplay of Blood Omen, but instead of blood, it's souls, and also um, it's 3D. It's not two dimensional like like Blood Omen was, which had a more or like original Zelda style art. Or not art, but um, like presentation, the way the gameplay and graphics were. It was more like a, you know, Super Nintendo, Zelda-ish game. This game is not. This is like, this is like the next generation. Even though they're both on PlayStation 1, this has had enough time in between it to make it feel like it's a next generation game. Which is interesting that they would go from 2D to 3D on the same, you know, platform, the same generation. It's not like the last one was on the Sega Genesis or realms. With their aid, you may gather matter and will yourself to become manifest in the physical world. This is taxing, however. Your strength must first be fully restored. You require no conduit to return to this plane. You may abandon your physical body at any time. So we can go in these portals and come into the physical world. There's two dimensions. There at least at least two dimensions. There's the spectral world where all this ghostly spirit stuff is, and then you'll switch between the two, and I'll show you that in a bit. But we got to make sure we have full souls. We can go in there, and you can also go back into it um, on any time you want, like he said. So it's an interesting part of the gameplay. Press select. You have this menu here where you get other things, of course, later on. But let's cast this. Now we are here. Sustain your strength to prolong your manifestation in the physical world. If you fail to feed or absorb too many wounds, this fragile matter will dissolve. Cool. Very interesting. Now you can go between two different worlds or dimensions. Planes of existence, whatever you want to call them. So like this, you can't go through that yet. That little animation he did there was uh, his, like, trying to open a door animation. Let's go over here. I think you can climb this. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, let's go over here. This is a great game. It has great story, great narrative with the characters, you great voice acting, the soundtrack's you. awesome. You still I think out of, like, of all these, like, older, like, 3D PS1 games, this is one that holds up the most. Fatal, will dissolve your physical body. Forcing your return to the spirit world. So you can see we were there before. We were under that area. Be aware that in the spectral realm, water has neither heft nor lift. It stands as thin as air. 
So if I go into that water, it won't just hurt me, it'll bring me back to the spectral spirit realm. Um, but also, it'll just make me fall, so there's like, there's no real water, because there's no like gravity or anything like that in the spirit realm, so let's see if I can get over it. And we did it. A little bit of a tutorial, but it's nice, it's nice to have. Because it's changing the gameplay from the previous game in the series. I do want to point out this game is also on PC and Sega Dreamcast, so this is like the lowest end version of the game, but it's still a good way to play. It doesn't run bad or anything like that. It's just uh, I think it looks a little bit better on Dreamcast and PC. Beasts could not be kin of our high blood. Do you suppose that time stood still for you, Raziel? Much has changed since you passed from the world of men. So these are like a different type of vampire that exists now. There is a big span of time between the end of Blood Omen and the start of this game with that intro cutscene where Kane's older looking now. Uh, and there's an even bigger span of time, which we don't know yet, from that opening cutscene and this exact moment here. I do want to check, is there... Uh, yeah, I messed up. I was going to say, is there a way to like, go down? Uh, or look look downward, but I don't think there's an aim downward, so you can't use the thumbstick, the right thumbstick. It's an early game. How do I get out of here? It's very dark. Not as dark as the first Blood Omen, uh, but it is very dark. Get out of here. There we go. So now, see, we're in the spirit realm once again. So to get back, we have to find a way. We have to have our health full. But we're still, like, it's the same kind of a layout, but different things exist in the different worlds. Okay, so we transferred back into the physical world, which is this reality that we know it as. And then um, there's the spirit world as well. So we got to fly over this. If we touch the water, we'll get transported back to the spirit world. So we got to be careful I about that, I knew my opponent's too. weaknesses, having suffered them myself. Physical wounds are fleeting. Vampire's immortal flesh begins to close as soon as it is cleaved. Vampires need only fear those wounds that impale or inflame. Water scorches like acid, and fledglings are devastated by sunlight's touch. I would have to modify my tactics to suit my foes. So this is interesting, you're a vampire fighting other vampires, and these vampires are like mutated, like abomination looking, like distorted versions of the vampires that you would typically know or typically like imagine in a book or a vampire movie. Um, but you can take them, you can throw, you can beat them up, you can throw them into the sunlight. If I can get them over here. Oh, if you hold down triangle, you can walk around with them. Throw him on the spike, that'll impale him, and the kill the vampire. So it's like, it's like staking a vampire, essentially. Into the spectral realm. Draw it in quickly, Raziel, or you will be compelled to follow. So if I don't take his souls, and that soul meter, that spiral down there, which always reminded me of the Sega Dreamcast logo, which is because I played this first on Dreamcast, um, it, uh... Yeah, it's, it's, if it goes down, it's not only your health, but it'll take you back into the spirit realm. So I can pick him up. Let's try a different type of kill for this guy, if I can get there fast enough. It's a little hard to carry him, it's like shaking back and forth. Throw him. Oh, I, he's waking up. Like I said, uh, vampires, their wounds will start to heal immediately after they get beat up enough. Let's turn him around. Throw him into the sunlight and watch him burn. I'm sizzling here, as Spike says on Buffy. There he goes. I can suck in his soul, too. We got it. It's kind of weird in this, like, people think vampires are, like, soulless creatures, but, um, in, like, typical vampire stories, um, but in this, they do have some kind of soul or at least some kind Your of energy left over after they die. What you knew in life. Even massive obstacles can be moved effortlessly. So I have extra strength, which allows me to move these giant objects. He sticks his like claws into it, so you can, like, push it. Pretty cool. I don't know where I'm pushing this thing though, so let's, uh, let's look around a bit first. Where do I bring that? Yeah, where do I bring that actually? 
Um, I think I bring it into the water. Let's try that. So you can see there's puzzle solving, like a Zelda game, or like a Tomb Raider game, you know? Is there a way in there? No. There's a way for me to get into the spirit world here. That box remains in the spirit world, so maybe I can find a place for it even then. I don't know if I can interact with it in the spirit world, though, so let's, let's try that out. These objects are mere shadows in the spectral yeah, realm. Yeah, you can't use it in the spirit spectral board. realm. You cannot interact with objects, which is interesting. Okay. Let's go back to physical. Now, what I'm trying to do is figure out what that box is for. Oh, I got it. I got it. There is a platform up above that I didn't even notice, because there's no way to really... As far as I can tell, there might be a first-person mode, but um, there's no way to really look up very easily. The cool thing is you can slide it back and forth like this, too. And then push it forward. Watch out for that dead dude. <laughs> So we got it pretty close. There's a platform above. Let's jump up. Let's see if I can grab onto it. There we go. Let's just take one last look. Up in there. Let's head on down the path. Now, I remember you can pick up these torches. So pick up a torch. Open the door. Oh, the torch went away anyways. My God. Now he's finally going over the to the sanctuary of the clans, reduced to ruin. The place Beyond where these he was walls at lay the pillars originally. of Nosgoth, the seat of Cain's empire. How humble it now appeared, collapsing into the dust of its former magnificence. And yet, I had only just emerged. In the instant between my execution and resurrection, centuries had apparently passed. So Raziel's trying to make sense of what time this he's in. Is what year is it? Cataclysms. The earth strains to shrug off the pestilence of Cain's parasite. He really does have a nice uh, graphical quality. The fate to of it. this world was preordained in an instant by a solitary man. Unwilling to martyr himself to restore Nosgoth's balance, Cain condemned the world to the decay you see. In that moment, the unraveling began. Now it is nearly played out. Nosgoth teeters on the brink of collapse. Its fragile balance cannot hold. Now with this torch in hand, I think you can also burn the vampires. Use this as a weapon too. They ignite, just set them ablaze. But you can only use it once. You don't need that anymore. Oh, I got the run of that guy. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with the combat in these games. And I haven't played this game in a long time, but I still remember some of this. It's pretty iconic to me. And it's a fun, nostalgic way to look back on, uh, you know, these games. I wonder if I can use this as a stake. Can I impale with this? No. It has to be a, a light, a lit. If I Let's bring him over to that bonfire if I can and just try to get rid of dispose of this vampire. Move very slowly. Whoa, I didn't know I could pick up the boulders. Burn! You also pick up other things like spears. 
Should be able to get that, yeah. It was probably locked. The doors of the sanctuary were immovable, either barred from the inside or rusted shut. I would need to find another means of entry. I always make sure, just like in the very first uh, Legacy of Cain, keep eating. Just keep eating, keep feeding. You've got to keep your health up, and also it's good practice. Now in this game, it's not so much good practice because it's like, when they're dying, you don't have a temporary time to get their souls out. You have to actually kill them and find a creative way to kill that monster before you get their souls. So in the first Legacy of Cain, Blood Omen, when an enemy was weakened like that, you didn't have the grapple or attacks or anything like that. You could just go ahead and drink their blood freely, or you could attack them one more time to kill them permanently. Um, well, this game is a little bit different. Going through the woods a little bit, this cave over here. What's this? Secret entrance. So this allows you to, I think, teleport between different areas in the game. I'm not really sure. It's like different waypoints. In the first game they had save points. I think you can save whatever you want at any time in this game. Um, so they also had like waypoints in the first one where you were a bat and you could fly across the map to different specific locations. I think that's kind of like what this is. It's like a waypoint to different areas in the game. And then once you set them, you can walk through them, and um, it'll take you to that other part of the level, or like the game world overall, uh, rather. So you can save whenever you want. Let's press select. Uh, select is just that. There's not really not there's not really that many menus in this game. Like the first one had like a bunch of different like full screen menus, and also had a lot of load times and stuff like that. This one is a game that notably, like, even on the box for, like, this and the second one, they're like, this is a game that has no load times. You don't spend very much time on menus in this game. You don't see a lot of menus. Not a lot of technical stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, there's, it's kind of interesting there's no load times. There's something that, like, Metroid Prime did to an extent much later on. Uh, was try to make a game without any real like load screens, like you don't see a bar go across ever. Okay, we're going up here. This at least had remained constant. The endlessly swirling. This is where he was when came through him off my into tomb that. and the womb of my rebirth. Though much of Noscot's landscape had changed, these cliffs gave me my bearings. My clan territory was to the west. I was anxious to see how my descendants had fared during the centuries of my absence. Oops. That was a goof. Uh, how do I get back up? Float across. We made it, finally! Wow, now we can continue with the game. The jumping's a little tricky. It's that one specific spot that can mess you up and make you have to backtrack quite a bit more than you normally would for a normal backtracking. Let's uh, fight some bad guys with my burning torch. Don't forget to eat some souls, reeve some souls, as they call it. Open the door. Oh, in a closed arena. Two more vampires coming at me. Let's ditch the stick. 
pick up the spear. Impale. And the bad thing about impaling them, uh, it does actually drop the weapon. I think I can pick it back up again, because it's not like it's on fire. There we go. It's kind of cool, you can see them become bloodied, like, just gradually. And that way you know when it's time to do a finishing move onto the enemies. Mmm, yummy! Take my spear. There we go. Utter desolation. My once proud kin wiped from this world like excrement from a boot. Excrement from a boot! I knew the hand that wrought this deed. The music they're playing is really good right now. I don't have to eat the soul right away, I can just... Wait, what the heck? I mean, I do have to eat the soul. Seems like if I take out this... I don't know, seems like if I took out the weapon from him, and he didn't take his soul, he would just come back to it. So I guess the enemies, if you leave their soul floating around for too long, the soul can go back into those vampires, and even though they're, like, pretty much dead, if their soul comes back to them, they'll come back to life. So that's interesting little touches, not only to the gameplay, but the way the story is around that vampire lore. It's, it's really interesting to me. You have to make sure they're burned up before you can, uh, do anything else. Sorry, I didn't do anything. Those pots. Check this door. I think these doors with these emblems on them, with symbols on the door, I think that means there's a, a teleporter room, or whatever you want to call it, and a fast travel room. So we activate this next one, so now we can always come back here if we die. If we die. Because there's no real death in this game, there's no real game over. In, in a similar way to how the God of War game from 2018 is all one continuous shot, this game does something unique where it's like, there's no load screens, there's no death, there's not really a game over as far as I can tell. There might be a game over if you, like, you die in the spectral realm, maybe? But I haven't had that happen just yet. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. We're gonna play a little bit more, and then we'll wrap things up, because I don't really know where this game is going at this point. I've played this game a lot more than Blood Omen, but I'm still not entirely sure where we're going with the story and how far I should play, be playing on this quick play. Yeah. Let me get one more kill on there for you guys. And don't forget to reave the soul. All right, everybody, that's it for today's quick play today here on Hybrid Games' is Gametober of the awesome game Legacy of Kane series, Soul Reaver. We checked this game out. It's just a quick play, just looking at the intro, the cutscene, the controls, how you start out the game, what the gameplay is basically like, some of the early characters, and uh, just it's really cool. I highly recommend this game to anyone who's even remotely interested in it. It might be a little hard to find. It is on the PlayStation 1. It's on the Dreamcast. It's on Steam for PC. That's probably the easiest way to get it. All right, everybody. If you like this video, please be sure to leave it a like. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Subscribe today for more classic gaming goodness. Share it with your friends. Donate on my coffee page if you want to. Support the channel. And you get some bonuses, too, if you donate on my coffee page. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching once again. Stay tuned for more Legacy of Kane and Gametober videos right here all October long, only on... Happy Beard Games. Alright everybody, bye!